Quorum President Thomas B. Marsh returned to Kirtland from Missouri to meet with the Twelve and reestablish Quorum unity. Parley, what brings you out this direction? Well, I'm actually on my way to Missouri. Well, how are things? And the Twelve? Heber has gone on a mission to England. How's that? Joseph approached him in the temple and called him right then and there. How could he do that? It is my respon... the quorum's responsibility to spread the gospel abroad, not Joseph's. Orson Hyde also. What? Orson overheard the ordination. He asked if he could be... be called as well. I specifically instructed the Twelve not to leave for England until I could organize their missions. Just over one. Seeking the Lord's counsel, Thomas met with Joseph. Brother Marsh, thank you for coming. Take care of these for me, please. Excuse us. Thank you so much for coming. Certainly. Please, have a seat. Thank you. The result is section 112 of the Doctrine and Covenants. Verily, I say unto you, there have been some few things in thine heart with which I, the Lord, was not well pleased. Exalt not yourselves. Rebel not against my servant Joseph. For verily I say unto you, I am with him, and my hand shall be over him. And the keys which I have given unto him shall not be taken from him. President Marsh accepted the Lord's counsel and labored diligently to reconcile the differences in the quorum. Still, he struggled with his own pride and hardened his heart. Well, good afternoon, President Marsh. Hello, Valet. I felt it my calling to come and tell you that your husband, Heber, will meet with no success in England. The spreading of the gospel abroad is my specific responsibility. As such, the door to missionary effort in England will not be opened until I send someone, or go myself. Pride led President March to apostasy. 